hear you. Oh, we're having some real trouble with you there, Reed. Um, it's like it's um, almost like it's almost like you're drunk. It's a really kind of slowing <laughs> down of the thing. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. I, I'm not quite sure what that could be. Hang on, I'm going to bring you onto the onto the call. Um, it's okay. Reed Diamond, everybody. Um, it's him. Hello. Yeah. Are you using a compressor? No, I got my moan into the uh, computer. Why don't I live? We'll see if that helps. Try that. Okay, testing. Hello. Wrong. Oops. Wrong one. All right. Let's try. I'm going to switch my preferences here. Okay, that, for, uh, hey, that, that works that, fine. We can hear you probably okay, there. Okay, so it, it just doesn't want to hear... It doesn't want to hear my microphone. That's all. It wasn't that it was we couldn't hear you. It's just like it was slow, like you were slurring all of your speech, which was really weird. You're, it's like your device was lagging behind everything else. It's inappropriate. <laughs> um, now, how do I get to see you, Miles? I want to see your beautiful face. Um, you can't see it through Discord, so you'd have to open the, the Twitch page. Okay, I will indeed. Just make sure that, that it's no muted, otherwise you're going to hear me twice. Hear me twice. I understand. I understand. Seven second delay. Where were Technology. we? Technology. Technology. What's going on? And I was watching your beautiful Twitch feed. I've enjoyed Aww. it. I've learned so much. Thank I you. you've introduced me to the Twitch. Yes. Um, <laughs> and uh, which is very ex oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, very excited now. I'll be able to see your face in a moment after I watch. Uh, which 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 show, which is this is um. Well, it's I've I've now seen the same ad uh, no. three times. <laughs> oh no, uh, I know it's the ads. I feel like I recognize some of the voices. Oh, and there you are. Okay, Hello. I'll Hello. put you in a little Hello, fun dear. place Hello. there. And here I am. All right, what's going on, my friend? Uh, would just, uh, mate. It's just so nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for thank you for enjoy. offering thank up your time you. and and joining us. I appreciate that. It's, it's my pleasure. It's been it's been uh, overwhelming the amount of. Of, of the amount of my friends that have just been like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, yeah, great, yeah, why not? You're 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 an awesome person. Oh, and, uh, stop it! Why go on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just grateful that uh, I needed coffee and walked into the right place, and now uh, we've been mate, for a while now. I know it's 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 weird how that shop has has increased my rolodex of random people like uh, it's such a into this microphone like it was still connected no. <laughs> like, 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 yes huh? i'm on the twitch yeah I'm on the chair so um, have no. you sorry so have you have you yeah. uh, is this like the first time you've ever kind of experienced twitch as a platform i think so i mean i've certainly I've seen, uh, <laughs> as a student of what the youth are doing today, I've seen some of this on the YouTube, um, but I love <laughs> it. Man. It's alive. You've got that amazing chair. You've got. Oh nice yeah, no, we got the gaming chair, buddy. Oh what yeah. You, you know, I love it. No, you're ready. I mean, like, if if for any reason you suddenly experience like massive G forces, nothing's gonna. I'm happen. ready. You're I'm ready, and braced right. for when it hits. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I love it. <laughs> Um, but no, and now the Discord, the Twitch, yeah, I want to yeah. know. I don't want to. I don't want to fossilize here in my in my condo. Oh I mate, I mean, I I feel the same way with like TikTok and stuff. They all come at me asking me to be on TikTok, right. and 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 I just don't. I don't get it. I'm 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 like, I, I feel it. I feel out. I'm I feel like Twitch has YouTube. I feel slightly out of my depth. Like I'm I, I think I'm a little bit too old to be on YouTube, but I'm doing it anyway because I you know, isolation. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the median age for YouTube? I, I don't know, but I feel like I'm too old. Uh, <laughs> um, but then, like Twitch, Twitch seems to be like I, I'm okay on Twitch, and then right. TikTok is when it's like I don't, I don't get it. Like Vine, well, no, you, I couldn't do it. Twitch, uh, t uh, TikTok just seems like you just got to dance, baby. This we, we, the world wants to see you dance. That's I mean, TikTok we did it this morning, and it's all over right. bloody Instagram now because someone donated oh, yeah, fifty dollars. Yeah. I, so on the Twitch, are you constantly? Are you? Do people just watch watch you play games? Um, I so far I do do a video game stream once a week because a lot of the people that 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 follow me on Twitch are um, fans of the show, mm -hmm. and not particularly into gaming. So right. I, I try and split it up. I do one stream on Thursdays, which we just it's basically just this, but um, they submit videos from YouTube that we watch together and. 
you I know and it. and and then they like you know they have the ability to like veto people's suggestions or like you know that kind of thing so it's kind of becomes this little war in the chat that i just sit here and drink water and enjoy enjoy watching them squabble while they try and get me to watch 30 seconds of something from 13 reasons why for example you seen that segue you like that segue there that's well, i love it <laughs> you're smooth but you're smooth but you, you know you've got the accent you're incredibly handsome. Uh, yes, oh, you've for running. God's sake, stop it. Thank you. Go on. Thank stop. you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Here we are. Yes, this is lovely. No, I'm excited. I'm really excited to be here, and I like the Twitch now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come up with what my Twitch angle is going to be. I'm going to come up with a nice I Twitch mean, there's angle. so many. there's so many talented people on the platform that don't do video games. I mean, there's yeah. there's a bunch of actors that, that are, like, like properly, like, nerdy. There's also, like, baseball players nba right. nba uh mma like ufc fighters there's one guy there's one clip that i loved where um a guy he he got knocked out in like the first 30 seconds in a ufc fight and then watched his own fight later on on twitch and reacted to his own being like knocked out in the jaw kind of thing which is just like it's the perfect use of this platform that's what that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna watch my old tv movies and make fun of myself yes God yes, Ooh. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I, I I think the problem is that they'll they'll probably try and test, like ban your channel for copyright infringement, even though oh, you're on okay. the bloody thing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I know it's it, it's, yeah, it's, I got it's it. The... But it's, there's something in that ballpark, something where it's self-deprecating would be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, any anytime they ahead, anytime they submit like a clip of me on the show, I immediately just rip into it. It's great fun. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. Um, you can do anything. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. sorry no, 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 no. Like, there's no structure to this. I've, I, I mean, I'm so bloody amateur at this whole thing. It's, it's, it's literally just farting about and 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 talking. Really. I mean, did you? How many hours have you been going for? So I am on my seventh hour now. Mm -hmm. Seven hours and ten wow. minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. C. Oh God. How do I say that? C. F. Vera. Thank you for the five dollar donation to Color of thank Change. You. We're nearly, we're nearly at seventeen hundred, which is amazing. Thank you. Which is really amazing. I came on early today before I had to run out and do like a ton of errands. I've been out and about all day. Yes. But I, I caught I caught the beginning and you were doing you, you got out of the gate really well and then I heard the mouse story. Have you has the mouse situation been resolved? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. It was a whole mission of like my cat chasing it and then it got stuck right. in a corner and then we kind of like sizz like got got into this like on either side of it. And then it somehow got away and found a hole be behind our cabinets. Oh, that yeah. we, we've just kind of duct taped the cabinet up and hope that it just like out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> so... <laughs> but but now, does is your cat does uh, do you support your cat doing its catly duty and and uh, well, we have shuffling... two, we have two, yeah. and one of them like really loves it, yeah, but but doesn't know what to do with it when it catches it. Right. And the other one, the other one, which is the bigger one, because we've got a big Maine Coon mm -hmm. and we got a smaller, like medium head. And she just like jumped out of her skin when she saw it and ran up onto the windowsill and didn't do her doing to keep her rent. You know, it's got to pay her way. Yeah, you're going to you're going to need to get one of those DNA kits and find out if it's actually a full feline. Cause that yeah, do... I know yeah. she's spoiled. I think she's just spoiled and intimidated by anything, I think. <laughs> most, cat, you know, most cats are thinking murder almost 24 hours a day. Oh right. yeah, yeah, but it's mostly just because we're not feeding them. Oh, we're right. No, but I'm I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested because I have a lot. Of, I have a lot of experience with being overrun with rodents. Oh really? Um, oh yeah, very much so. We lived um, by the last the last house we were living in in California, we out in the country. Yeah. I think there was one point where there were they were sort of rats. These were yes. roof rats. They're in between a full size rat and a, and a mouse. Yeah. And four at a time were running out of the top of the stove. Um, oh my it, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the worst infestation or the worst sort of explosion of Willard and his pals happened while, I, of course, I was on the road and my, and my my wife valiantly uh, handled that situation. Who says my wife says a big hello? Hi, Marnie Marnie. Says, how are you doing? Mom. Hi, how are you? Um, she's watching downstairs, I think. So, Hi, uh, nice to um, kind she, of see you. <laughs> we should comment. Um, 
But uh, yes, but the cats is a very interesting situation because you know there's the, the I've always said if your dog was 400 pounds, it, it would still be your best friend. But if your cat was 400 pounds, it would eat you. Yes, sure. hands yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I don't remember who it was, but it's like a dog is a is a is a friend for life, and a cat is a tiger that happens to live in your house. Exactly. Yeah. Well, no, guys. So you're definitely if that mouse is foolish enough to come out, at least the one uh, you know the one who's not in the drapes. Yeah. Would probably well, yeah. I we, they I th we think it chewed a hole in the drywall, like in oh, the yeah. thinnest part of the drywall. It just decided to chew a hole and then just appeared, and like uh, I don't know. It's the first time we've had a mouse in here, so we're, I mean we've been here like seven years, so we're quite lucky, luckily. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's that's... nothing they can't get through. They'll eat through anything. Yeah, that would. It's been the nicest part about. Well, not not the. Was, that's ridiculous. Dave. Was that nice part? <laughs> one, of the, one of the loveliest parts about moving back into the city and now in, in a condo is because every night in our house in California, it just as the sun was going down, it was like Grand Central Terminal of rats just running between the, the oh. ceiling and the floor above. You can just hear them. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. The country living. And uh, so, yeah, we had them of all sizes, all sorts of um, uh, rhododentia. Do you, so do you um, think you like you get used to it and you, it doesn't phase you as much? Because um, my partner uh, worked in a restaurant and, you know, if you work right. in a restaurant, you immediately have to worry about rodents all of the time. And so she's yes. like, when we were chasing this thing yesterday, she was like, I've been away from work too long. I'm starting to like not have a tolerance for little things running around anymore. Do you think that you still, is it like for you, Is it's like if a rat jumped out at you now, you'd just be able to just like grab it by the, the neck and just be like, okay, you're out? Or do you think you would still like run a mile? I No, no. I'm I'm still, I still think I see them all the time. If I see, because I'm so, <laughs> I have so much PTSD from really <laughs> with them for a long time that if I, if there's a sock in the middle of the night that's sort yeah. of just poked in the corner, I assume it is one. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't have many, uh, you know, uh, heroic qualities, but one of them is, uh, you know, I can handle the, the rodent. I can handle the rodent. I have very diminished affinity for them. Yes. And, you know, I, um, when, when, when you're overrun, I, you know, my philosophy, I don't know, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to be controversial for sure. I just feel like, you know, outside, especially when we live in the country, outside, that's all yours. You yes. can have that 100%. Yes. But inside, then we have to have a different conversation. Yes. And I think I'll leave it at that. You yes, know, I don't want to. I agree. You know, my, no, yes, I completely agree with you. Fans, I'm, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I completely it. agree. Um, how has been moving back to Toronto after you've moved from, from California? How, how was the move? When, when did you move back? It was in like... Early, early this year? No, last year. Well, the family came. My wife and daughter, who are both Canadian citizens, yes. um, as well as U.S. citizens, they came here uh, last summer. They came at the end of July last year and found our I place because I was yes. still working, shooting Thirteen Reasons Why. Oh, um, yes, okay. I was back in the states shooting that, and then I, I didn't get to come out here because I also had to get all my papers in order. And yes. uh, I came out here in October, mm. and and went back and worked and drove the dog out, and then. But I've been here in earnest this year and then if certainly as soon as i saw the writing on the wall that the border was going to close yes i made sure that i was um in my my adopted country of canada and Absolutely. it's been it's been a lovely place to quarantine yes and um, yeah i couldn't be you know to your initial question i couldn't be happier to be here i yeah. love it here you yeah me too here. mate oh yeah 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 where, are you, where did you grow up i was in london i, I, I was, well actually i was all over i was in london and then uh, we moved out to like West London right. and then we moved out to the country to, to, uh, like Norfolk, which is like East country. You can, sure, of course, yeah. for like five, five years. And then I had and to go back to London and then I went up to, uh, near Manchester for university. And then I was back down okay. in London again. And then I came here. So I've kind of been all over really, which is why people say I sound Australian. <laughs> Cause my accent's so muddled with all of the different dialects. Um, and then I came here in 2013 and I've been here ever since, well, 2011 and then 2013. So I've been here ever since. And what inspired you to come here? Um, God, I mean, I'm going to get up people are going to get upset with me, but England's awful, mate. England's just so bad. I just, yeah, I just didn't enjoy it. I, I don't yeah. fit in there. Um, no. you know, and like I, having moved here and lived here for seven years now, I fit in so much more here than I do in, in England. 
I'm yeah. just, I'm just, I just fit. Uh, it, it's just the things that I miss are like the architecture and my sister, and that's about it. Everything else is just like I could do without, and so I moved away, and it's been fine ever since. Really, um, it's just so much easier to live here, which I'm sure you can attest to. You know? I can't. I mean, it's funny because I'm I'm such a I'm a I'm a little crazy Anglophile, so <laughs> I'm I'm definitely in the UK, and yes. I love going over there. But I get it because I have so many British friends, and they all you know certainly when they get to California the first time, none of them want to leave, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I knew a cinematographer who every year would call it. He'd sit in his pool on Christmas Day in California and call his family and go, guess where I am. <laughs> right? And, you know, like, and uh, so, but I, I'm a, uh, via Shakespeare and via history, I'm, a, I'm, I'm fascinated yeah, with the history and the, and the architecture and all those things. But yeah. I get it. I know it's a hard, it's a hard place to be. It is. And, it is, absolutely. And I think it's, and also there's, there's an element of it that everyone, when they're growing up, hates the place they live in. The amount of people that hate yeah. Toronto, I'm like, why? It's so much nicer right. than a lot of places. Um, and it's, you know, there's that stir-crazy element to it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And, and originally, I wanted to go to New York. Right. But I couldn't, get a, green, could, couldn't get a green yeah. card. Um, yeah. or, or yeah, I didn't even try cause I knew it was going to be really impossible to do it. And then I didn't even consider Canada. And then I was just on a backpacking website and it just had like a list of places and it was America and then Australia. And I didn't want to go to Australia cause, cause right. students in England, Australia is the place you go when you are on a gap year. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. Right. Um, and then it just said Toronto and I had no idea about it at all. And then, and then just went, oh, I can go right. there and, and like, you know, you get, as an English person, I get Commonwealth um, right. access. So it was just so easy. Because of your fealty to the Queen. That's, that's is it. Yeah, because, you know, immediately you, you see a picture of the Queen and immediately you have to, like, pledge allegiance and what have you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, it's been, it's been great. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, um, yeah, it's great. You, 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 yeah, you've got a great I've life. I flourished. Here. Is that's that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. Is that I've flourished here compared to yeah. I think I would in in the UK. And I think it's kind of, and you 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 know I I've not really done the states in terms of any kind of professional aspect. But it feels yeah. like, it feels like Canada is like the in between between the UK and America in the way that they conduct business. I think it's very much mm -hmm. like. In the States, I've heard a lot of people say that it's very much like you turn up, you say, I want to do this, and they go, okay, great, and then it's on. And right. in, in the UK, it's very established. It's very <laughs> like, oh, did you go to RADA? Sorry, who are you? That kind of thing. And here, it's very much like they want to do that. There's still some like gears need to turn and stuff, but it is mm -hmm. still very much like the optimistic view of of the states as well in terms of production I'm, I'm I, unless i'm talking out of my ass i could be no i think as and also you know there's something i mean as the two non-canadians speaking back <laughs> about this, but i go you know uh, you know canadians are just 15 percent nicer too. yes it's, uh, it's just it's just got a great vibe and you know every country has their origin story that they sort of have to live up to and it affects how they deal you know how the, the it affects the entire course of their history and so canada has a you know very its own unique mm. you know origin story through confederation and all that and it just there's just something about it and, and toronto is just a great because i i grew up in new york city and, and i really want we really want to give our daughter a city experience and marnie my wife had an amazing time growing up here and mm -hmm. she loved it and and i just always loved the city and i didn't want to go back to new york city and toronto is just so multicultural it's mm -hmm. so international amazing food but it is it's got it's got little hints you can feel all of the hints of i mean of, of england and then mm -hmm. it's got you know, and canada has certain north american qualities that it shares with with the u.s but it's it is its own country and it's i i've been really lucky i've i've been coming here i've been working here for over 30 years and mm. i've i've gotten to go to either via me working or marnie working we've gone to so many provinces i mean and we've even gone to she even shot a movie up in nunavut and which was so really? exciting we we're up in a cali wheat wow and, oh yeah and i I did my first show here in Toronto in maybe 1992. Yeah. And then I worked in Vancouver. Marnie and I met on a movie in Winnipeg. Yes. I, I've shot in Calgary. I've been, you know, in, we've shot in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. Marnie was on a film in Quebec. So it's, and I'm really, you know, really, I'm excited to explore all the places I haven't been. I mean, it's so physically beautiful. We're about mm -hmm. to go camping this weekend and Lovely. just go up north and 
Yeah. Lake Huron, my most favorite Great Lake. Yes. And uh, as I rank them, it's, it's, it's Huron Superior, and then we just go down from there. But, um, but the, yeah. No, yeah. No, you've got to have a list. You've got to have a great ranking. Lake. Yeah, you've got to have a How ranking. How great they are. Yes. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's spectacular here. And I, there's so much. I mean, I was just, we were just watching. You were talking about the other day, you were talking about how people don't know about CBC Gem. Yes. Yeah. And we love the CBC Gem. And Marty, yes. we love it. We, were, we, we stayed up late last night because they have all those short docks. Yeah. And the winners are amazing, right? They're just because there's just something. Well, this is it is this is also a great country for producing your own material and mm -hmm. getting a grant and having that content. So you, you you see all these sort of 10 or 20 minute very personal stories that are just mm -hmm. you know breathtaking and really just unique and, and eclectic, but also um, the one of them uh, we saw it took place in Newfoundland. I always Newfoundland. say that wrong. Newfoundland. Say Newfoundland, yeah, no, you got to get it right. Yeah, yeah. Newfoundland, uh, a, uh, but um, <laughs> I can't wait to go there. I've just been to the airport once, and I just I can't wait to really go and explore there. There's just so many places I want to go. So I'm really happy. Hopefully, COVID slowed down me getting all of my papers as yeah. quickly as possible. But um, they're coming. Good. They're coming. Good. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to, you know, I wear the maple leaf proudly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I like, ever since Brexit and Trump, I've been like, okay, cool. I'm getting my citizenship. It's like on my, it's on my, like high on my priorities list. Once this is all over is getting my citizenship. Right. Because it's just been like, you know, everyone else has let me down and Canada seems to be doing a somewhat better job. So why the hell not? You know? For sure. Um, yeah, and you yeah. Yeah. So, so. You were you were filming Thirteen Reasons Why, um, and that was from was that all last year? When did you when did you wrap up on on Thirteen? I think I started because we we've shot the la the, the season that just broke a couple yes. of weeks ago. So yes. Season four, we started that in July of last year, and then finished right before Christmas, sometime right. in December. And, right, right. And they shoot that up in sort of the Bay Area, Oakland, and mm -hmm. North Bay up there, Napa. Right, right. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. but it was, of course, as soon as my family moves to Canada, I get a, an interesting location in uh, you know Northern California. Usually, I'll, I'll be in, I'll be you know in Atlanta or somewhere like that. Yeah, that, that we're not really going to drag the family to. But um, but uh, yeah, so it was great. And I, I that was in a was really happy to be part of that show because I wasn't. I can't say that I was really aware of it until I met with them, and then I started watching it, and everyone was so good, and mm. it was very obviously very compelling, and. Mm -hmm. and um, and it was, it was as from, from a professional point of view, it was just really exciting to work with so many cool, uh, younger actors who were just, Oh yeah. I mean, so many, yeah. so many, so much young talent on that show. Absolutely. So, so talented and such great human beings. We're really, we it just, it just makes me feel bad about myself and all these things. <laughs> Cause they're just that Dylan Minnette. I was a huge fan of his from, I think the first thing I saw, cause there were years obviously as a parent where I only went to kids movies. And I yes. think he, he was in the Goosebumps movie. Yeah. And I remember in the Goosebumps movie, I go, oh, that guy's special. And that's the first thing I told him. I go, yeah, I was a real big fan of you in Goosebumps. Mm. Um, but he's so good. He's got his band and, and, but all those kids, it really gave me, um, now I sound like an old fart, but it really gave me, super uh i was super a lot of hope about the future because these guys are all just so talented but really cool and really smart yeah know who they are yes. and um yeah really you know substantial mm. awesome it was a real fun show to work on and it was great characters so was that the, um, was that the 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 first principal or you know, dean that you've ever played because most of the time you're a law enforcement in some capacity or or that kind of thing so was that the first kind of teacher first... role I'm trying to think have I played well I played I just while I was doing that I also played a teacher on how to get away with murder but I'm trying to think about how many teachers I've played prior to that but this was my first administrator in a school yeah would, which is because you could see you could see a lot of of your of your kind of you, you know the kind of um interrogation kind of style of of interviewing the the I think that you that is kind of your bread and butter for the roles that you've had right intentional that's why they asked me to do it yes because the creator of the show was a big fan of homicide yes so when i met him and and this is you know if you haven't seen homicide i'm sure it's impossible to find unless you have the dvd collection now yeah. but it was a yeah, yeah. top show in the 90s and he when i met brian yorkie who corrected created the or you know he's the showrunner creator yes. of that show yes he, he, i bumped into him in the hallway and he goes reed here's the guy 
this guy now is the dean of discipline, but he used to be a cop in Baltimore. And I, I knew exactly what he's talking about. So he goes, that's who I want. Uh, that's how I want you to do it. So, right. um, and so it was great. That was funny. So it gave me that backstory that he was a cop before. And then, um, and then Yorkie said, and spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen the season, but yes. it won't be a big spoiler. It's just an emotional spoiler. Mm-hmm. So he goes, the theme of our season is that, all the kids think that the adults are the bad guys and actually the adults are all trying are all looking out for them yeah so you're gonna come across like a heavy but you really care about them mm-hmm. and, and that's a you know that's a beautiful nuance to bring in instead yes, of just I sort agree. of you know, yeah. three-dimensional but but the funny thing is um my character he he's called he's the which they have and i guess i don't know if they have him up here but in the u.s now i've learned doing research it this 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 principal or this administrator called the dean of discipline um, yeah, I so, saw that, and I didn't know if that was just something that they'd written for the show because I'd never heard of that before. I never heard of so. And when you look it up, let me tell you, the first few Google hits are yeah. not about uh, school administrators. <laughs> it's all porno. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm the dean of discipline. And yeah, absolutely. Hello. Um, but it's a real <laughs> thing because I guess you know the way some of these humongous um, high schools go. Mm. The, the principal, who you know, traditionally when I would get sent to the principal's office, the principal has to handle everything. But now there's just so much admin um, stuff. Admin stuff that each some in some big schools they have four deans of discipline. So you'll have a guy who follows what? the class. All, well, because they'll follow each, they'll follow a grade all the way through. So they'll follow them wow. from freshman year to senior year. But it's interesting because um, it, it's interesting to me. Uh, what's fascinating about most of these guys is they really do want to de-escalate. It's kind yes. of what we're asking for yes. in, in in the world as a whole right now. Their job is not. They don't want to get people in trouble. They want to yes. find ways. Especially, you know, if you, I mean, that's what you want. Certainly, if someone who's going to be dealing with young kids and young minds you just you want someone who goes i get it you're yes you got hormones going through you yes, you got absolutely. stuff going on at home look let's find a way to get you where you want to go and and you know you, i can't keep seeing you in my office but we're mm. going to come up with something so i think at the best of it just as, as you know what we're asking for in the wider world you want someone who's going to try to give you some better options and de-escalate a situation instead of making something worse. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. And, and like, what is the... No, I, I completely agree. And I think that's yeah. that, that's definitely what people have been asking for. Yeah. Um, what, what, has the, what has the conversation kind of been like at home uh, with your daughter, like bringing up these... I mean, I, I presume that she's very switched on to what's going on in the world, but what, what, is, the general, sure. what is the general conversations... What are the general conversations that have been going on as a as a family? Do you mean in just in the last few weeks? Yes, with like in the last on? few weeks with with you know the George Floyd incident and those kind of things and the protests. I mean, she was you know she was very she's she's very active and she's got mm-hmm. I mean she's only eleven right and mm-hmm. but she's not only eleven she's eleven and mm-hmm. eleven and a half but she was on it right away. I mean that's the other thing too you know she and her friends are so connected so they're they're doing art and they're doing black lives matter. Mm. Um, you know, they're, they're making, they're, they're not tweeting, but they're, they're putting stuff out there and they're yes. talking about it at school. So yes. they're much more, they're, 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 they know what's going on. They've got mm. their finger on the pole. Mm. So, and we were, it was really great. It was really heartening. We were up in Collingwood um, doing a socially distant uh, vacation because someone offered us their place up there. And we're like, mm. okay, well we can socially distance in a different location. Mm-hmm. And they had, an amazing Black Lives Matter uh, uh, march like protest. there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago, which was it was stunning because it seems it's, it's not a very large town, but it it seemed like everyone turned out and all the businesses sort of shut down for that day. It was on a Monday, and they all participated. And so it's nice to see that level of act. I mean, well, that's also I think what um, smarter minds than I have <laughs> said about this yeah. current um, period is that what you're noticing, as opposed to the '60s, mm-hmm. is that the 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 multicultural and the multiracial makeup uh and the ages and Mm -hmm. genders and all that of the people who are speaking out right it's not just a sort of certain set groups this is this there is no one type of person who feels outraged by this and feels that things need to change no i agree yeah and that's why you know that's why things are changing and and are going to change absolutely I'm, i'm wildly i mean you know, we're speaking in Canada, but mm. I still I haven't quite shed my American perspective on all of this. So initially, I was very 
I was pessimistic at, at first because of, you know, the, we were leaderless there in the United mm -hmm. States. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was only made worse. But I still feel like that's, it's, it's, it's gone beyond him. And, and I feel like the U.S. is on steady foot. Of, it's, it's, it's heading in the right direction. And yeah, yeah. worldwide, it's amazing to see um, how connected and how um, uh, one voice uh, uh, we all, you know, yeah. yes. of people are. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's frustrating. I'm, I'm 52 years old and I was a child of the civil rights movement. Mm. And I really, and I grew up in, I grew up in a very diverse, com very diverse community yes. as a kid in New York City. And I kind of thought, we're 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 done right not done but we were moving in the right direction yes and obviously the most upsetting thing is going god 50 years later no we're we, the, still, we the still the still same the stuff still the same stuff yeah 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 this yeah time I mean, it get dealt with yeah but it does it does definitely feel like you know people your daughter's age and and getting mm -hmm. like slow you know in that kind of age bracket gen z seems to be the one that just isn't going to put up with it which i think is, right. is 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 so heartwarming and like inspiring to see so many people um and i think social media is bizarrely the reason for that is that they can get access to that media so or that information yeah. so much quicker and in, and in a more accessible format um than Absolutely. than yeah. like even you know even the news you watch the news and you've still got to like wait for that kind of that information to stream out um yeah and yeah, and the news. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously, you know, the, the pitfall of social media is that it is unfiltered, but the the boon of it is that it's um, unfiltered as well. So you're mm -hmm. getting raw information, and then hopefully you just, you just got to make sure that it's accurate what you're getting. But obviously, you know, the news is not necessarily certainly the American news mm. is not really the place to go these days. No, but yeah, I mean, yeah. the, kids are, the kids are so much the kids, but every mm -hmm. people are much more tuned in, and and gen, gender wise and racially, you know, it's mm -hmm. no one we're not those those old conversations they're 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 going away and everyone and and and, and it's as it as as it always should have been absolutely right? and I, absolutely and yeah. i thought we were there you know i thought no. we were i thought we were away and then no. of course i realized you know 30 years ago 20 years ago we weren't no. um no. and uh, but i feel you know i feel very positive about the future yeah i mean i mean I mean, even in in our industry, and I and I'm, mm -hmm. I, I I say that loosely because I I have nowhere near the career that you do, um, <laughs> but like, Stop do you? It. Do you young. Oh, you stop it! Um, do you think that? Because especially you know, with with law law enforcement roles being your kind of bread and butter and what have you, do you think there's even going to be a tonal shift in the way that they're portrayed in in media? given given the way that things are are being are being shown to us you know even on on twitter we're seeing the way that mm -hmm. um and it, i it, it seems as though for for a very long time cops is all cops have always been the heroes on tv um yeah no yeah. i mean there's no question i mean i'm in contact with so many writers who are writing and that's and and the 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 police procedural will ch change dramatically mm -hmm. um it's there's no question mm. and um i'm intrigued i'm i'm i mean i think this will be a time i mean it's i mean we're in such we're in such unique times right now with this a global pandemic and we've yes. all been in our houses for yes. four months and and now with all of this happening i think this i'm i'm excited for the stories that are going to be told because mm. this is a time of great yeah uh, um upheaval and change yes. and these um and i think yeah a lot of voices that didn't get to the table are going to be heard and no no i mean there, there's there's not going to be you're not going to see the cop given the beat down in the alley and, yeah you know, I mean, there's no dirty harry coming yes yes i mean you know for me as i got older once my hair turned gray i stopped playing cops but i just i i then i started just playing evil white guys yeah. and, and, and uh and I, clearly that the, that character will still exist for a while for so, sure uh, absolutely yeah. yes so, no it's it's I mean, uh, <laughs> definitely I, I it's one of the one of my roles was was white supremacist teenager so it's definitely there's still work for us yeah. going out there for for, yeah. for better or worse um yeah it's it, i think it's it's interesting um chatting to you because like we we you know, you 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 were at the um, 
at Social Capital, where we, we I, I, I watched yeah. you, you be interviewed in Social Capital, and, and it's, it's fascinating to me, because this is the first time that I've ever really had, um, had to sit in the role of, like, interviewer, right. and, and also talk for nearly eight hours now. Which is imp incredibly impressive. Right oh, now, I'm, oh, I'm, bugger, yeah. uh, dude, my it's throat the is wrecked. Chair, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, Support. it is the gaming. It's oh, mostly yeah. the gaming chair and the microphone, and then everything else is just uh, you know glitter on the screen. Um, but you, you, you are you're so eloquent at the way that you convey points, and that you, you like. How do you do that? <laughs> how is it that you that you have such such um such an eloquence in the way that you uh that you you speak and 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 maybe there are people that, that are watching now because we have quite a lot of young viewers that that yeah, are quite sure. um might feel like it's the most daunting thing in the world being able to talk to you know even an audience of 50 let alone 100 and something that we've got right now so it, was, was it just your training at school that got you there do you think you always had the gift of the gab well, you, you, you've, you've overwhelmed me. It's been a tidal wave of flattery Sorry. that I don't yeah, think... Well, hey, listen, you started it. <laughs> no, you're, 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 darling, you're magnificent. I mean, look at you. Look at you. You've game, I, have, I, don't, I have an Ikea chair. I don't even have a gaming chair. But, <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I, I enjoy... I mean, well, conversation conversation's one of them. It's, it's, it's a very important facet of being a human. So the only reason... I may, if uh, you're so lovely to say that I sound intelligent or eloquent, it's only because I enjoy talking with you and you're asked and we're having a real conversation and you're, mm. it's, so it's, it's about the give and take. So conversation's really important. And, mm. um, and uh, so I, I don't consider myself particularly eloquent and I'm, I'm always, I'm very envious of, of, of eloquent people and you're quite eloquent. And you, like you say, you've been speaking for eight hours, but um <laughs> I do think the one, the one interesting thing is we're having we're having a very honest and truthful conversation. I find it's definitely easier and the flow goes better if you're telling the truth, mm. right? Um, so that's one thing you want to tell the truth. Um, but uh, I I just I enjoy speaking with you mm. and uh so but so thank you you've made me a little shy oh stop. Um, well, no, i mean, no. I mean you, <laughs> have you have you um, you know i, I presume I, I, that you've i presume that you've been in positions where you have to 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 introduce people or you have to give certain certain you know maybe maybe an alumni dinner or something to that effect or you know those kind of pos positions oh, where, oh, yeah. where oh, you let me oh, let me oh, let me just say like i'm i'm a dirty ham <laughs> Oh my God! You're talking about being in the theater. Oh my God! I love it. No, no, uh, I, lo I love nothing more than a room full of people who've assembled to listen to me try to make them laugh. No, no, uh, right, no. Right, right. I, I heard stuff from my daughter's school. Yes. You know, when you saw me do the improv thing. Yes, at yes, the, yes, at yes. The yeah, yeah. I, uh, no, I love it. Right. I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not to, to sometimes, I think to her secret delight, but to her chagrin, my daughter may be a little, uh, I'm not shy. Yes. And I'm not quiet. Um, I love to talk to wonderful, beautiful, fascinating people yes. like yourself. And I mean, um, you know, we hit it off. Yes. You were, you were the brave one. You introduced yourself to me. And then we had a lovely conversation while you're creating perfect cappuccinos. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and then, well that's and then, the stick that's the stick of it is that like just i i mean it was the only thing keeping me interested in working there for so long was that right. was that i i was able to you know actually build connections with people while i was working um and and then you know you 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 were in like you know and this is when i start being an, a huge a huge bloody nerd is that you you've you've been part of the whedon gang for for mm -hmm. nigh on what 20 years now you've been part of the whedon gang no 15 as long as my years? daughter's been alive so about 12 when she was first conceived so 12 years 12 I did years first, 12 years ago i did my first joss thing dollhouse yeah uh yeah which which is like uh which was a phenomenal show and then you were also part of uh that beautiful little film that he did mm -hmm. after avengers which was gorgeous yeah um and and that's what grabbed me more than anything else was the was the fact that like i think i think that's part of being um a member of that kind of fandom 
you know, we, Whedon, Whedon has a, a fandom that anyone associated with him immediately attaches onto onto their work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah. of course, I was like completely, completely enamored by by Mister Dominic in 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 uh, in Dollhouse because because he's phenomenal and and he gets his comeuppance because he's an asshole. <laughs> um, um, but so what what I was going to ask in terms, I wasn't just bringing yeah. that up because I wanted to gush. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I know I've noticed there's there's certain directors and certain you know talents in in Hollywood and stuff. The the two that come to mind are Whedon and Frank Darabont, where mm-hmm. you have the, they have their actors, and there and there's that little community. And what, cause in case I ever get into that situation where right. I'm I'm like, wow, this is like a thing. What is the thing that stands out? What makes you go, oh, this is like a family? Because it does seem like, it does seem like Frank sees these people that he works with mm-hmm. as his family, and the same thing with Whedon. And and what is the difference? What is the difference between like a regular set and like one of those kind of sets? Well, first of all, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know Frank, but with Josh, I mean, he says quite explicitly. I think he's. I'm sure he's, it's in print. He says he collects people along the way, and that's yes. his goal. And then yes. he's always trying to find people. And I don't know what it was because when I with the dollhouse situation, they called me up, and it was a one scene part in the pilot. Mm-hmm. And so they said, "Hey, do you want to come and shoot this scene? It's just a scene in and with Olivia Williams, who I was a fan of. And then it, with Joss, it's Joss's show. And I go, "Well, I wanted to work with Joss. I was like, mm. sure, I'll do one scene in the pilot." And so we shot that scene for three hours. It was really, it was a great scene. And he and I hit it off right away. And I remember walking to my car that night and Olivia said, oh, we'll see you in the fall, you know, when the show starts mm-hmm. shooting. And we did. And then suddenly they created this great part for me and he'd collected me, but he and I fell in love with each other right away. I, we have a lot of, we're Sondheim freaks. We have right. a lot of, sort of similar references. Mm. And, but it's also, it's that thing which is difficult right now because we're all separated and certainly as an actor you probably put yourself on tape a lot for auditions yes, right yes yes and the thing which can be good you know it gives it gives everyone an opportunity but the thing that's missing is there's something there's always that intangible n- non-verbal communication that you have when you encounter someone yes. you're like i like that person yes you know, where the chemistry and- yes absolutely person. yeah and that can't be you can't it's I, w- I would say it's n- near impossible to transmit that via this device. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, on some level, we just we were in love with each other when we first met, right? And it just had happened right away. And then, so then, he, because now you're part of this ensemble, mm. certainly a lot of people on that show were part of the Whedonverse. And yes. then when we made Much Ado, you just, it's just a group of people you want to be around. I mean, Much Ado, excuse me. It's Mill Street organic peating on me. <laughs> oh, um, the Mill Street organic, absolutely, buddy. Absolutely. But um, what happened was, you know, he had two weeks off between shooting the first Avengers movie yes. and um, editing it. Yes. And he he and his wife were gonna go. His wife at the time, they were gonna go to Venice for to celebrate their anniversary. And she goes, you know what? Instead of spending that money on this Venice trip, why don't you make this movie that you've always wanted to make? Yes. So he just called us all up, and it was funny because it was only I, I, not even three months prior. Well, no, it's like two weeks prior to him emailing me mm. about this. I'd said to my wife, I said, um, "Are we allowed to curse here?" Oh yeah, you're fine. Oh, you're fine. Brilliant. I was like, I was like, why the fuck did I go to Juilliard? Oh, I, I'm never going to do Shakespeare again. I don't know right. why I got all this classical training. Right, right, and right. I go, I'm never doing Shakespeare yeah. again. And then suddenly I get this email from Josh. He goes, hey, I'm doing much ado about nothing. Would you like to be in it? I said, of course. He goes, okay, Absolutely, I'll let you know what yeah. your part is. And then we all show up. And it was it was only two weeks. We shot it at his house. And it was, I would say, one of the most magical experiences of my entire career because you love everyone there. He's got such an innate sense of the material. So I felt even having gone to Juilliard and done doing tons of Shakespeare, I'd never mm. – under, I'd never been around someone who understood Shakespeare at that level, and I've been around a lot of greats. And and he under there was no there were no small parts because my experience with Much Ado prior to that was always Beatrice and Benedict, Beatrice and Benedict, filler, 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 and, filler. And, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it. parts are so rich, and he knew that. And then you're with this ensemble of actors who are insanely talented, but also just wonderful people. So 
I, I rarely have had this experience, but it was one of those where everyone just stayed all day. Yeah. You watch you watch other people shoot their watch. scenes, yeah. you hung out, and um and it was magical. And then to come full circle, we got to have our premiere here in Toronto, which was yes. so cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I was the I was the Toronto old hand because when I when I was first courting my wife, uh, she lived here. And so mm. I, I I had all these restaurants that we'd gone to. I call them the stations of the cross of our of our, of our <laughs> courtship. It was all the places we went, and they have very deep. I have a very deep romantic tie to yes. the city. I yes. really love it because it's where I fell in love with my wife. Mm -hmm. or, you know, got to first you know be with her when we were first together. Mm -hmm. But it was I could take the, everyone around, and we were here for the for the TIFF, and they premiered. That's where Much Ado premiered, and so it was a magical place to premiere it. It's and uh, I was just thinking about the other night we were going up Young Street, and I could see where the theater was, and because I think we premiered at the Elgin right and yep. uh uh so yeah so but it, being part of that group is amazing and then you make all these relationships and that's how I ended up being on uh Agents of Shield because yep. Ed, his brother Josh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah they were writing on Dollhouse and yeah and it was just one where everyone just yeah I mean uh, it's fun to work I've, I have another sh another showrunner Kevin Falls who I've done four shows with I mm -hmm. think they're they're they create an atmosphere i mean kevin falls says explicitly he has a no asshole policy right yeah, and yeah, yeah. and i think that's really that creates a wonderful environment but yeah i mean you'll it's you know it's an interesting thing too because you can't i think people think especially when you're young you think you can make something happen right mm. you think you can when I don't know if they use this word anymore. Back in the early '90s, I'd be around all these people like, "I'm networking. You got to network." And I go, "Oh no, oh. they still use networking, buddy." Oh yeah. Oh, it's a horrible word. And <laughs> yes, you you need to have your group of friends, but you can't go in there and you can't achieve that through some mercenary means, right? You yeah. can't just go. I'm going to do this. Mm. It has to happen organically. And so, I mean, the Joss thing. I, I went there to do one scene in an episode because I was really excited to work with him. And it's also, you know, if I have one, it's not a piece of advice. It's maybe it's just something that I've learned. And mm. if it's helpful, it's helpful. But mm. I go, I've definitely found more, I've, I've had more great experiences and more uh, uh, adventure from saying yes than mm. saying no. Right? Yeah. And, and, do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. You know, and so, so usually people call I'll, and or some new experience. I'll, I'll, if they, hey, you want to come do this? Yes, I'll just. I don't know. And usually it, it turns out it far exceeds my expectations. Like every once in a while, you go, ah, oh, probably should have said no, but I learned something from it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not a very. I I wish I wish I had more uh, calculation in my persona, but I don't. So I, um, I was very. I've been very lucky to uh, come across. Uh, wonderful people and mm. and we find some sort of kinship mm. and uh, and and still doing it you know so i'm that's what, what, one of the reasons i was excited to come here and make new friends and you know, may hopefully obviously go back to doing improv because i did a ton of improv yes. comedy that, yes. and and also i'm um, doing theater again and and being in a vibrant cultural city like toronto so um it's now, certainly nurturing for that it's certainly nurturing for yeah. all of that kind of stuff um yeah it, it's it's yeah, I, I I think that a lot of a lot of people we're talking way too much shop, but I don't care. It's my stream. I'll do what I want. Um, All right, darling. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people, certainly people that are new to the industry and stuff, they they see networking as a what can you do for me kind of thing. And sure. I've 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 encountered it a lot going to TIFF parties and stuff like that, where you try to talk to someone. And then immediately it's just like they, they, it, you can see the clock, the gears turning to see whether they Heaven recognize you. Yeah. Are you useful yeah. to them? No. Okay, cool. Yeah. Bye. And then I'll go talk to someone else. And I think a lot of people in the industry, certainly young actors, have this idea that that's what networking is. And it's not. It's being yeah. a nice person that people want to talk to, which they don't really yeah. explain as much, I think. Well, That's because you can't manufacture it. No, you know, it's I agree. Having worked with George Clooney or Brad Pitt, like those are guys who don't just make everyone feel important, whatever mm. they do on the on the show. They mm. actually believe it, mm. right? 
you know, they are those Menchi characters, or I'm lucky enough to work with, this is going to, you know, guys, get, get, get no, out No, please, your please, just draw, name drop as much as you can, please do, go for and it. I worked with Joanne <laughs> Woodward, you know, um, very amazing actress, also married to Paul Newman. Yes. You know, when, when you encounter these people, um, it's not a put on, right? Mm. So it's, they, they, and then what ends up happening is because they have such good souls and they're so magnanimous, it only makes it draws you to them and it only makes you want to help them or serve them or do what they need and so um i mean i think i mean now mind you i have i have encountered and and worked with and met people who are very strategic Mm -hmm. and and calculated and it will get you it can get you far Mm -hmm. it just i but i always wonder i always wonder what's it like under the covers at night when you're home it, yes. it can't feel as good yes I and agree. i imagine there's a lot of insecurity there a lot you know because but also you know i don't want to get too deep on <laughs> which but um yeah um but the other thing is you just are who you are right yeah so yeah. um you're either, you're either a, a person who's interested in what other people have to say or you're not yes. or you're or you're very good at being calculated and obviously obviously there's there's the, the history books are full of people who succeeded through their calculations but i don't you know usually certainly in in shakespeare they don't they don't meet happy <laughs> ends so, uh, so no, right? all the world's a uh, stage they're all the world's a stage yeah <laughs> but yeah so you know mm. uh but you tell me you're you're wiser than I am. I'm just some. Oh, you know, are you? You're... Come on, please. All I know is I work a green screen for crying out loud. No, no, you no. You can I'm... work a green screen. So I see because you got. Oh, you you had the um you had the David Tennant back there. Oh earlier, yeah. I yeah. Hang on, I'll I'll bring it back. Hang on. There you go. Yeah, okay. I got I got Tennant on the writing on the B. That's a that's a little. That's a little uh, in joke for the Twitch. Okay, I love yes. it. I yes. guess. Um, I'm the sure tenant I can figure thing. it out. Oh it, no, it's it's, it's a it's long story. Uh, he's the reason I got into acting. Um, his How's that? his his Hamlet and his regeneration were oh, yeah. so his his regeneration scene. Was, I mean, Russell T Davis wrote such an incredible uh, final act for him, and he, it was really great. Oh yeah. god, um, and it was. Yeah. It still makes me cry today so mm-hmm. so i like that was the reason yeah. that i was like i need to give this a shot because i can't i can't not try and do what he does or even get close to what he does um That's great. yeah and he i mean his hamlet was phenomenal and the fact that they made a dvd of it and then you know it was it was just incredible the way that they modernized it but also not at the same time and it's kind of anachronistic but also you know they the stage play was was such a huge you know the production right. was such a was such a huge success in 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 england um and he's kind of just gone from strength to strength really he's he's mm-hmm. he's definitely someone i would love to work with but i i don't know if i'd be able to function <laughs> um, oh, yeah. i get that yeah you would I'm oh, sure he's great. i'm yeah, sure yeah. no i'm I, i'm sure he's, he's bloody lovely and there's you know yeah. he his um his good omens that he did with uh michael right. sheen michael sheen, yeah. michael sheen even the even their their just just the scenes together was 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 wonderful it was absolutely it's it, i mean they have such great chemistry together um there's a show in in the uk we can't get it here which i'm really upset about they've made a show about basically it's have you seen the trip with um <sighs> yeah we uh, yes. sellers no, 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 not the. Oh, no, no. You're, oh you're talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. With um, yeah, exactly. Yes, so it's kind of Alan, like with Alan Partridge. Yes, 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 with Alan Partridge. I was trying to remember the actor's name, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm eight hours in. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a quarantine the trip. Steve Coogan, thank you. Yes. yes. So it's kind of like a quarantine the trip, where it's yeah. it's David Tennant and and yes. Michael Sheen. <laughs> it's called Staged. Right. And it's literally, I, to the best of my knowledge, it's just uh, this of them just discussing things as though they're ju- they're just having general conversations. But it's it's a script. Like the whole thing is well written and what have you. And then they also have their partners and families involved in the production as characters in the production. Right. Um, and 
I'm desperate to watch it and it's not come out here. I hope it comes out on Netflix or something, but it's from what I hear, it's been getting rave reviews in the UK. We're going to be able to access it. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll happen. Um, But yeah, he's just been, he's just been a huge influence on me. Um, That's great. That's, that's, that's so, it's always exciting when someone motivates you and makes you want to do it. Absolutely. Oh God. I mean, that's the reason why I love acting is that it can, you know, if there's uh, like, if there's someone that can, like even a character, if a character's motivation or actions in a movie or a play or, what have you then inspires you to do something in your life that you wouldn't have done otherwise that's i mean that's uh, that's bet that's more valuable than anything it's incredible that's an incredible that's an incredible power that you can have as an actor so it's definitely like (sighs) it's motivation for me for sure um sorry we we've we've been talking shop like crazy i hope this uh, i hope (laughs) i hope the guys in the chat are enjoying this this highly highly uh highly <laughs> shop talked <laughs> version of our interview um it's been lovely having you thank you so it's much been, for being here no my god it's my pleasure i i i said you know it, as soon as you asked me i was honored and, and said immediately of course yes. there's no, there's no it's, question it's, it's no been question. it's been absolutely lovely to have you and if I, we and want I to talk video games right now um santa brought my daughter super mario kart and we've oh, been playing oh oh yeah, now we're talking mario kart 8 and uh you, did you manage to get a switch before they they became gold dust or are you uh, on the wii yeah. u we have no we have the switch <sighs> Man, um, try and find a switch but, right now but the thing was i was addicted so this is how old i am i quit <laughs> video games cold turkey in 1996 okay and, uh, this is and a story I was, that i need to hear okay go on i was addicted to super mario world mm. Ma- or Mario. Mar- I say Mario. I say Mario. I say Mario because I'm English. It's yeah, go on. Mario. Mario. Yes. And it got bad. So I'm doing my first season of Homicide, and I was yeah. alone in Baltimore. And I lived one block away from where we shot the show. Yes. And I would go to work, go to the bar with everyone after work, go back to my place, and try to get to the next level every night on Super Mario World. And Super Mario World, for the, for the children out there. Oh, no, seemed... no, no. They know what. Super Mario World, this is on the SNES, yes? Yeah, it's it, and it seemed, but it seemed, it, it seemed like the most advanced game. And now we have it. And my daughter, my daughter uh, started playing it the other day, or a couple of weeks ago, I guess when we went into quarantine. Yeah. And because I got, I got the sort of the classics on there. Yeah. And I had such, I know all the songs. Yes. I know the music. I know, I know how, I, and and I'm pissed off though because I'm because the new the switch controllers don't work in the same way, yeah. so I can't do I can't do run forward and fast and jump in 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 a nice way. So I'm actually yeah. because because the addict in me is coming up again. I'm going. We need to get the old controllers because they make yeah. them now. Oh no, you exactly. do. No, you absolutely yeah. do. You need that. You need that classic controller for sure. But I got to the end, and I got to the end, and this was before the internet really exists. So I used to have to go buy books. <laughs> yes. So be, oh yeah. I had, go, I had to buy books, right? Because I uh, because there were little Easter eggs, or there were little because I wanted to get the max points and get to the and get all the way to the big end. And there were a couple of things where I was like, I don't know how to get. You know, you're like yeah. jump at this moment and grab the vine, but I had to read it. And look yeah. at little pictures. Yeah, in, I know, mean, there was a whole industry of cheap books and 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 <laughs> walkthrough guides and all that kind of stuff. Are, are you going to be? Uh, are you go- now that you're entertaining your your addiction again? Are you going to be um, trying out Mario Odyssey because it's a it's a return to form? You know, I. It's really we, we're luckily we're um, we're a disciplined family. We're disciplined with our screen time. Yeah. So certainly during the school year, we're very we're very. And my daughter is she because I could go. I ha, I have not played without yes. her, and I haven't stayed up late. Yes. But on that Mario Kart eight, she's 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 already she's the best one, right? Oh, she's yeah. the best one in the house. Oh, yeah. She's best to hook up with our friends. Yes. She's amazing. But we only play. Um, on the weekends, we play Friday after school through Sunday, and she'll just play one round and then put it down because she's wow. She's, I, okay. I know. So, um, I I think because at least you know I, I've got the support of my family and my house, I feel like we could add this game. You're in a safe space. We, I'm in a safe space, <laughs> and, and, and people would notice if like, hey, you haven't come to bed and you're still trying to figure it out. Yes, but. Uh, 
but the Super Mario World, she's doing really well on it, and she got stuck on something, and because I can't look at it, I, that one I actually can't play because I can feel the obsession. I'm like, yes. I'm gonna get through this. Yes. And and I literally because I gave it, I gave it nine months of my life to get from the beginning to the end, right? Yes. And and I was and I and then I I, I go, oh my god, yeah. I spent the last nine months and and what do I have to show? But, no. but Mario Kart. I really like it, but now, and I have, I, I must admit, cause she, I, I've watched a couple of YouTube videos yes. on the best way to slide yes. and, um, how to use, uh, but she's smoking me. Mm -hmm. Um, she's smoking me. I mean, literally we've never played and she hasn't gotten first place in every round. Yeah. And then, and then even when we play with her cousin, who's, who's quite the adept video game player, so it's well it's if you DNA. name if you need me to school her i will because unfortunately i'm that guy at, at parties when it comes to mario kart so i will it destroy her oh dude no no I just <laughs> well, well okay I, I, I'm <laughs> like that. but um, um maybe once we're out of quarantine just come on over yes and, absolutely absolutely and then you can show up you, you know what in fact actually what we should do is you show me how yes. to school her. Yeah, we'll do right? the secret we'll do the secret schooling so that you can ruin her. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um have you have you seen the speedrunners on Twitch? Do you know what speedrunning is? No. Okay. So there is an entire uh almost industry of people on Twitch that will stream will they will stream um speed runs which is the trying to complete the world record for the fastest completion of right. different games right. um super mario 64 is a, a well-known speed running game uh right. super mario world is also on there i imagine if you watched one you would probably oh, yeah. your your brain would probably melt with the hacks that they use a lot of the times they use like little um bugs in the code like if they hold a shell and then also hit an enemy at the exact time that they're pressing a different button combination, they'll mm -hmm. like fly three feet in the air and then complete the level without even having to move and stuff. And that's part of the speed running community. Um, I'll send you a couple. I, I imagine it'll blow your mind when it comes to yeah. I won't old, be able to handle school. it. Yeah, you. no, absolutely. Mm. Did we get it? Did we get any questions from the masses? I, I, I've run out of time, mate. <laughs> oh, okay, let's go man this is miles this is so good i know how, time, how much longer are you going i mean i've got a couple uh, i've got a little bit more time i've got a little bit more time if you no, want no, to I mean, no get rid of me go back to go back to what you because I, I i'm sure i'm sure i gotta cook dinner but i'm saying yeah. you you how much longer are you gonna go tonight um we'll see i mean i've got a consistent viewage right now so i'm probably gonna go for another another half an hour or so i think so so i think that's Miles, i won't take up any more thank you so much this has been extraordinary it's no thank great you call. it's People, been please donate yes, i'm gonna donate um uh miles this was, it's it's i lovely talking to you and you too, uh, i feel like it's been a good catch-up session it since has it. hasn't it god it's been great yeah. Yeah, oh. and we'll do it again and soon. And um, thank you for putting this together. And it's just a wonderful cause. Oh, and you're and you're you're, no, you're, you're a hero. You're you're Herculean. No, 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 no. Come on, come yeah. on. It's I I literally just sent a bunch of instant messages. That's not. That's anyway. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you right. very much, guys. Let's get bees and ones in the chat for Reed Diamond. Thank you very much, Reed. It's been lovely having you. Farewell, Bye, you guys. hasta luego. All right. Have a great weekend. All right, love and kisses to everyone. Bye. And there he goes. Thank you very much, guys. Um, that was wonderful. Thank you, guys, for... for uh, I hope that was enjoyable for you. Um, okay, so that was way longer than I was expecting, that conversation. That was wonderful. We had such a great time. Um, exclamation mark donate in the chat.